richly inspire us, O Lord, to consider and accomplish what you see is good. For we know that we cannot live without you, but that with you we shall prevail. And so we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this noon comes from the psalm appointed for this past Sunday, Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose to bring near, to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds, you answer us with righteousness. O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, the one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There has been a recent study published um, of about uh, 2,000 Americans, uh, 1,200 of which were parents, and the suggested um, outcome of some of the questions was that Many American families came closer together uh, during this pandemic and uh, sheltering in place. Um, and here's some of what was written in the article. 75% of American parents witnessed a key moment in their child's life while in self-isolation. Um, from developmental milestones to simple heart-to-hearts, three quarters of parents polled experienced a key moment that they otherwise may have missed with their children while in lockdown. And they go on to say, uh, regardless of whether respondents uh, were working from home, 68% shared they used lockdown to improve their family's communication skills. And in several cases, more were eating meals together, which they also pointed out uh, they became aware of some unhealthy habits and were also um, trying to improve their physical health as well, observing each other while they were home. And uh, I do want to lift up that we need to be in prayer for households that have not experienced um, 
an increased sense of peace and closeness, but rather continue to be places where there can be danger and strife to people present. And we know that that is true for children and adults. And uh, we certainly do pray for those households and that there can be assistance and intervention there. Um, but it is interesting to think about the benefits uh, and maybe a new appreciation some of us have developed for our families and um, our dwelling places during this time. Uh, but we hear about an even more impressive dwelling place uh, in Psalm 65. Um, Blessed is the one you choose to bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. And um, what kind of God is this who is inviting us into his house? And we get a glimpse of this in the verses prior to the one I read. Oh, you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgression. It is a God who hears the pleas of his children and who offers forgiveness. And uh, Pastor uh, uh, Tim, Timothy Keller has a wonderful reflection on this um, from his book, um, uh, The Songs of Jesus, a devotional with the Psalms. And he writes, God hears and forgives us, though we do not deserve it. And those who choose him realize that it was originally he who chose them and drew them near. Only in the New Testament do we see how radical that grace was. God brings us near to live in his courts, not simply as guests, but as his children and heirs, which we hear in John uh, chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. God's highest praise is from those who know they have been brought home to live with him through Jesus, God's true son, who died to make us brothers. Our salvation is absolutely free to us, but infinitely costly to him. And that is amazing grace. And so we hear this image, an invitation of being into, coming into God's courts, to dwell in those courts. Uh, and my study Bible describes the courts of the Lord this way. The various courtyards that surrounded the tabernacle and temple were restricted by various standards of holiness. To enter these holy places was to enter God's presence. And of course, we need that atoning forgiveness of God to come before him. And it is a blessed gift that we have received through the life, death, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we can come before God. And we are forgiven our sins. And we know that in the word and water of baptism, we have been adopted as loved daughters and sons into God's family. And we do also in this psalm hear about the amazing, awesome nature of God, that he established the mountains, the God who created all that is, but also sustains it with watering and seed and flour so that there is daily bread for God's children. And the good news for us because of Jesus Christ is there's no longer simply one place to which all pilgrims must go to be in God's presence, but God is with us where we are. Now, I know that it is a grief and it is my grief as well that we're not gathering in what we call God's house, um, the church building right now, and we pray for that time to come soon. Um, but we are invited to dwell in God, no matter where we are. And I want to share a writing now from Henry Nowen, 
Uh, there were a series of lectures, um, a sermons really, I think that he gave, and uh, they've been compiled in this book, um, Following Jesus, Finding Our Way Home in an Age of Anxiety. Um, and he writes about this concept of, of dwelling in God. Uh, and he writes, now and writes, in John's gospel, Jesus says, I want to dwell with you. I want to be your friend. You are not a servant. You are part of my household. Visit me, stay here, spend time with me, dwell with me. And now and goes on to encourage us to spend time in prayer with Jesus. Be with him. Listen to the one who invites you. Be quiet. Like a child dwell in the house with like a child dwells in the house with her mother and father, just dwell, play around, be there. A half an hour a day? Is it possible? Is it possible for half an hour just to be, to sit there and do nothing, to waste time with Jesus? For that is what love does. You want to be there, enjoy it. It is good to be here with you, Jesus, we hear in Mark 9, verse 5. And slowly, I want to take a break here from now and to say, doesn't that sound like the kind of togetherness that was lifted up in the survey about the American families? They were forced to simply be together, waste time together. And sometimes in those moments, amazing things happened. A child may have taken his first steps. The survey indicated another child shared that they had a specific struggle at school. And the parent thought about, you know, I never would have known this if I hadn't been taking this extra time, maybe time society often views as wasted time. And that's how it can come off when we think about setting aside this time for prayer. But now and lifts up what happens when we regularly spend that time with Jesus. Slowly, he writes, we discover that we are building a home in the Lord and that we are in his house, not just for the half hour, but for the whole day. We are always in the house of the Lord. We are in a place of the Lord wherever we are, whatever we do, we are already home. Even when we are on the way to our house, we are home. Don't say I'm too busy. Don't say I have better things to do. Just be there every day. Pray and discover. We can live in this hostile, competitive world and be at home. Listen, ask, dwell, and you will slowly grow in Jesus. I invite us this week to think about sheltering in place with God, sheltering in God's family, spending time with our beloved Savior, Jesus, wasting time with him, hanging out with him. And maybe we have a greater sense then when we do need to leave the doors of our own dwelling places to run errands, to go to work, to do essential work, difficult work, work about which we may even have anxiety in these times and people who may be upset around us, remembering what Nowen wrote that wherever we are, we can be at home in the Lord, in his love and his peace. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.